OK, Laboratory 6, Supply Independent Current Mirror. Please note on here as well we've got two sets of transistor parameters because we're using PNP as well as NPN. Figure 1 is what you've already seen before. A standard beta helper emitter uh, degenerated current source. Figure 2 is substantively more complex. You should recognize elements of it However, its, uh, it's operation is a bit more sophisticated. I'll come on to that when we go through the PowerPoint. Figure 1. You are to design to the specification. The specification is a supply voltage of 10 volts, reference current of approximately 1 milliamp, output current of 1 milliamp. You realize that, of course, this current here is what you vary to, to get the exact output value. Voltage compliance should be less than 1 volt. Also, Emit degeneration should provide an effective early voltage of about 10 times the normal early voltage. In figure 2, the exact same specification. However, of course, this circuit should operate with more independence to the supply rails. OK? Your results. Remember, this is an assessed laboratory. You need to have some form of results. You need to have the performance of each circuit shown on in graphs for the output current versus the load resistance. For both the figures, they want to be on the same graph. Therefore, we can derive any differences between them. And the output current versus V1, V1 in this case being the supply voltage to both circuits. So we can see how they perform with respect to supply variations. Again, your analysis and your conclusions. OK. Simple Kirchhoff's current law. We're going to effectively formulate I reference, R reference. OK, R reference 2. Here we, of course, have VBA, Q9. OK, here VBA. Q6, and here we have some small value, I'll call it VE, uh, proportional to the current flowing in the emitter and R5, so it's a degeneration factor. I'm sure you should be able to design that one now. Basic current law or basic Kirchhoff's loop is through here, through there. Okay? You're designing for your target, for your current to be sunk here, to be 1 milliamp. Okay? That is the most important design parameter. The current flowing here, or the current flowing here, is not the most, pr uh, most important design parameter. You're going to vary your load, like you've done before. You'll show me the gradient, the output compliance level, and the fall off. So this is output current against RL. OK. That's the simple circuit done. Let's move on. First off on this circuit, I'm going to try and explain what all the elements are. This transistor and this transistor are effectively a mirror. This is a beta helper fed from ground. OK? So it's exactly what you've seen before. It's just a PNP variation. These two components here are sort of a ballast. All they do is drop voltage. They serve no function. You can leave them at the nominal 1K value. Your output load again will be varied and you'll show how it performs. These resistors down here are basically degeneration. Okay, They're exactly emitter degeneration. How does this circuit work? If we draw a line here, we have a current mirror feeding current down here and a current mirror feeding down here. This may be the reference line, this may be the output line. If we assume that a current mirror provides the same current to each branch, the current in collector Q1 and the current in collector Q2 is the same value. If that's true, we can suggest 
that the current at this node is IC plus a little bit of IB. Ballpark the same value. We can assume that the collector in this current, sorry, the current in this collector will pass to the emitter, will pass down through here, and there'll be some small base currents as well. So the current on this side of the load will be a little bit greater than that side due to one, two base currents. What's happening with all these currents? Well, this current has to flow somewhere and it will create a voltage across VREF. VREF will establish the absolute base voltage VB. We know that we have a VBE on Q1 and we have some degeneration. If we account for the, val the, the amount of current flowing in Q1 and approximate that it will be the same in the emitter of Q2, we can effectively calculate VBE. We can then apply degeneration using our VAF equations. Remember, VAF effective is equal to 1 plus I'm not going to give you that value. Remember, that's for you to actually calculate yourself. So we will add in our own value of resistance to create VE. For the output voltage compliance, we mean to need to ensure that we will operate fine with 1 volt DC at this node. That implies on your supply you can operate completely okay with a 9k load. Anything above 9k you don't necessarily have to operate from because our output current is targeting uh, I out is targeting 1 milliamp. Okay so as you can see the heart of this design is Q1 and Q2 the method in which it becomes supply independent is the feed from an, a current source. And the current source will always be balanced, therefore it's always feeding the same values down each branch. There's a slight loading effect on Q2, what we've turned before a static error, where that current in the collector of Q2 is feeding the base of Q1 and the base of Q3. So our reference current, whichever way around we call our reference current, will be slightly different than our output current. Our focused design goal is this term here, our output current. We don't really care about our reference as long as it works. Okay, this is a complicated design. Remember you're going to be assessed on this. I'm not going to tell you what any of the, any of the questions are going to be in the paper that you will sit based upon this piece of lab work. All you know is you are going to be asked relatively complicated questions that you will need to know the answer for. There may be some correct answers, some obviously false answers, and some very good plausible answers. You will have to make the best judgment. You are advised to take a great deal of notes. You've had example of logbooks, now please use them.